Good afternoon, Jags. I'm Quentin Rivibaki. And I'm Elise Lee. We'll be your anchors for today's show. So, with the start of a new school year, you know what that means. Indeed I do. It's homecoming week. To start off this enchanting week, we held the homecoming coronation in the gym last Monday. Let's hear from Duncan Zeminski on how the event went. This week we had homecoming coronation at Jefferson High School. However, there were some changes made this year. We interviewed Mr. Schnitzer and Student Council Co-President Skylar Strudwick about these changes. So I think the best way to think about what our frame of mind was when deciding to make a few little changes to homecoming is we were just trying to think about like what does it mean really to be chosen to be on homecoming court? And for us, we saw it as a chance for students to really honor their friends by showing them that they're an example of like what it means to be a Jefferson student and the best that a Jaguar can be. And so we looked at what other high schools and colleges have been doing lately and some of the changes they've been making. We kind of followed suit and we really just wanted to make it feel as inclusive for everyone as possible. And in the end, being selected to be a part of that group really is an honor and uh, congratulations to those kids and I hope everybody had a great time at Coronation. So the game is on Friday night. It starts at 7. We'll have like a little performance from the marching band and the show choir will be there and the football team will very obviously be there. Uh, we hope to see everybody there. So, And then the dance is on Saturday night. It starts at 8, ends at 11. The theme is Enchanted Garden. It's going to be very exciting. Tickets are for sale this week. And I don't think there should be really any big changes so far, other than everyone is expected to wear masks. So please, please wear a mask. So congrats to the homecoming royalty for winning this year's coronation. We wish them well in the dance floor on this Saturday, October 2nd. This is Duncan Zeminski with Jaguar Spots. Wow, this year's coronation came so fast. Thank you, Duncan, for the report, and congratulations to those elected to homecoming court. This year's coronation, though different from past years, was still pretty exciting. It stinks that the freshmen and sophomores had to see it from their classrooms. There is something the entire school can attend this Friday, however. How could I forget? The homecoming game. This next story is tackled by Ismail Ali. After two long years, Homecoming finally makes its return. Students are eager to watch, and players are ready to play as well. Let's go find out some more. We'll first be talking to some players about how they feel about playing their last homecoming game and their first homecoming game. Uh, our last homecoming game is going to be special. It's going to be our last time we're on the field together. Um, I don't know. It's always been fun to play with uh, the team, and uh, it's going to be a memorable game. So, My first homecoming game as a sophomore, uh, it feels pretty good because we didn't have the opportunity last year. So we just got to work hard, get the dub. That's, and that's it, mean. really. That's now that we've gotten the players' perspective, let's now talk to the students about how they feel about going to their first homecoming game and last homecoming game. I'm excited to go to my first football game for my school and have a good time with my friends in the stands. I feel more than excited. The homecoming game has always been an event that I've always had a lot of fun with. It's, it's a type of event that you go to and you just, you have a lot of fun. You, you, you go with every, anyone you want and no matter if your team wins or loses, you're, having, you're with your community, you're with your friends and it's a night to remember, to say the least. After hearing from all these different perspectives, we should all know one thing, that the whole student body is very excited about this homecoming game. It's Ismail Ali, Jaguar Spots. Thank you, Ismail. I can't wait to see how the game plays out this Friday. Do you think we'll win, Q? I can't say. But what I can say is that you all should show up to the game in school colors and have fun. Agreed. But until then, there is something else students should be looking forward to. The, the fall, fall play. play. This year's fall play is a Midsummer Night's Dream. Let's hear more about the show from my past self. Thank you, Future Self. For the past couple weeks, actors here in the JTC Auditorium have been working tirelessly on one of Shakespeare's most famous productions, A Midsummer Night's Dream. Today, we will ask some of the cast and crew about the show. Any major challenges while practicing? Um, definitely line memorization. I'm not great at that, <laughs> which is a very important part of theater. Um, but that's probably the hardest part. Everything else is kind of natural. For those um, wanting to join theater, my advice would be definitely go for it. Um, the worst that can happen is you don't get it, and then you try again. My favorite part of the show is when I turn into a donkey and I look like this. I'm definitely really excited for the upcoming performances because um, we haven't performed in a theater for quite a while, so I'm really excited. 
I'm super excited for the performances. There you have it, Jags. The performance dates will be on October 7th through October 9th at 7 p.m. and then October 10th at 1 p.m. Tickets can be purchased online or at the door during the performance days. So come support the Jefferson Theatre Company and have a magical night in the world of Shakespeare. Break a leg, cast and crew. This has been Quentin Rippybaki reporting for Jaguar Spots. Thank you, Past Self. Personally, I'm really excited to see Andrew in the donkey mask. I'm just excited to see it all together. The cast and crew have put a lot of work into making the production. I'm sure it'll be an, amaz an amazing experience. Agreed. Though they aren't the only team on the move. No, they are not. Recently, soccer has been kicking it up. Let's have Nicholas Feeder tell us about what the players have been doing. With just a few weeks left until playoffs, Jefferson's boys and girls soccer teams are in full swing. We talked to the coaches of both for more information. Our soccer season started on August 16th, and we have been at it for about a, a month now. We uh, play for about another month. We finish around uh, mid-October, hopefully a little bit later when we win uh, some additional playoff games. Wonderful play for the Jaguars as they go up 3 nothing. Uh, the season goes into the first week of November. The state tournament is at U.S. Bank Stadium where the Vikings play. Our section playoff games are October 12th, October 14th, and October 19th. So just three weeks away and we'll be into the playoffs. Next, we asked some of the soccer players themselves what their goals and expectations were for the season. Some expectations for our team is just for us try to do our best and try to make it to section finals. Um, hopefully to win our first section game because we just got moved into a new section. I don't know, I expect to play, play well with my teammates and stuff and kind of just do good this season. Kelly coming in. He chips it in. Good luck to both of our teams at sections. This has been Nicholas Feiter reporting for Spots. Thanks, Nicholas, and best of luck to the players at Jefferson Soccer during the rest of their season. Geez, Jefferson has a lot going on these next couple weeks. Oh, definitely. But before that, we have some last-minute congrats. Congrats to the following novice debaters for placing in the top five in their house chambers. Clara Cook, Kian Chen, and Shane Ross at our first tournament of the season. Congrats as well to Joseph Chute for placing in the top four of the Senate for a varsity debate at the Jamboree tournament. The Bloomington Jefferson High School Earth Corps was nominated for and will receive the 2021 Bush Lake Youth Conservation Award. This award is for youth for their outstanding contributions directly for the Bush Lake chapter of the Isaac Walton League of America Conservation or the Environment. Congratulations to the following choir students who will represent Jefferson at the Metro West Music Festival next Tuesday at Chinesson High School. Anna Benjamin, Grace Vaughn, Clayton Larson, Aiden Bertrand, Ethan Nelson, Solomon Grusho, Kitty Hatton, and Joey Stedman. Congrats to everyone mentioned, and we are excited to see your talents shown off. Though there are a lot of talents that aren't going to be seen during these activities. Unfortunately not, but we can get a sneak peek into what some of the students and faculty can do. You heard that right. Stay tuned for the credits to witness unique talents from across the school. Until next time though, this has been Elise Lee and Quentin Ripibaki for Jaguar Spots. Peace, Peace out, out Jags. Jags.